My name is Christian. Um, so as Peter actually said, like I gave a presentation last year and that was like pretty successful. I guess we had like 10,000 views on YouTube. Um, and this was a little bit about like tools, uh, how to optimize your workflow. Um, this is the SQL and that's I guess the cool thing about our uh, just like technology in general, it just moves so fast and I'm gonna give you a couple of tips and hints to just make your own workflow way faster. Um, so basically like if you actually look at like any startup or like companies just in general, they, they are like pretty inefficient sometimes. Um, like they do a lot of like copy and pasting themselves and like they don't really have that like a lot of like really good tools set up while there are a lot out there. Um, so actually the first one um, I'm going to be showing off, and this is not really a tool, it's more about like how you can change your actual workflow. Um, so um, some of you might already know about this, and I'm going to be using a simple app here. Um, so this is like coding in a browser, and the app that I'm going to be using um, is actually pulling some pictures, those might actually seem pretty familiar, that are, um, have a hashtag with Hoesco's USA. Um, so one of the things that is actually missing in here, uh, I know like I had some kind of like on-click handler here, but it doesn't seem to be working. Um, so it was actually supposed to go to um, Instagram here. Um, so let's actually dive down a little bit deeper, right? Um, this is actually written in AngularJS and just a little bit of like CSS animations here and there. Um, so what we actually see here is like pointer events not, which is actually gonna make sure that I'm not able to do any of those things. So how, how does that actually work, right? Like for any front-end developer, what you usually do is like, okay, we try it out, oh, it seems to be working, but then, right? Like then what happens is you have to go to your editor. Um, you have to make like all these different changes in your editor, you have to save it, make sure there's no like conflicts there, and then you have to go back to your browser. Actually, nowadays, um, there's something built into Chrome and it's called Workspaces. Um, and what you can just do, um, just this is the settings panels, so you can just open that with like just your question mark. You go to workspace and you actually add just a folder from your local directory. Um, just basically select it, you make sure that Chrome actually has access. And then this, this was a little bit more cumbersome, so that's the reason why I'm actually showing this. You actually have to have edit, and then you can actually add all these different um, properties, like the URL prefix, also your um, folder path. So what this is gonna actually do is it's gonna set up a mapping between what you're seeing here in the browser, localhost 8000 workflow slash show, and your actual local file system. Um, so what's gonna happen if I refresh, usually what you see in the sources panel, you're gonna be seeing something like localhost 8000. You don't see that anymore. The only thing you see is actually just your directory right here. Um, and yeah, I, this is a pretty cool key command as well, like just control O to actually open the file that we want to mod modify. For me, that's main.css. And then what we're gonna do is actually remove this, save it, and when we refresh it, it's actually saved on our file system. This is huge, right? It's like just one step that you have to do every single time when you're developing in the front end. Um, Having said that, I don't think we're completely there yet. Um, like the editor that's built into Chrome, it, it's pretty good. Um, but there's some other things that I'm gonna be mentioning right now um, that aren't built in quite yet. Um, I, but I, I really hope this is like the direction we're heading. Um, so um, next up is gonna be about linting your code. Does anybody know what linting is? How many people know what linting is? Okay, not everybody, awesome. Um, so if you don't lint your code, I would suggest definitely lint your code. Um, and what does that actually mean? It's actually gonna, enable you to spot problems early on. Um, so even in your editor, uh, there's a lot of different tools. I'll be showing some as well. Um, so in this particular case, there's always the debate, of course, like should you use like semicolons at the end, like in JavaScript or not? In some cases, this can actually be an error. Um, so what these tools are gonna be doing, uh, let me just bring my editor up here. So this is my editor and you know, I just have linting enabled by default. Um, so it is, you know, plugins installed. I'm using Sublime Linter right here uh, with JS Hint. Um, and then it's like very small changes, right? Like if I actually remove this particular thing, I don't know if it's like super clear on the screen, um, but you see these like error notifications, warnings. Um, one cool thing that has recently been introduced is your JavaScript style checker. So especially if you're working on like open source and projects with multiple people involved, 
it's always annoying, you know, that one person that always adds like these extra spaces in your code. Um, you know that guy or girl. Um, so, and what this is going to be actually saying, even those particular things are going to give you um, errors. Uh, AngularJS just added this, I guess, three or four weeks ago to their own code. Uh, they're still moving towards making sure that all of the code is actually compatible. Um, so it does things like, you know, extra spaces, even like extra line breaks are going to give you an error notification. Um, and when I say like spotting problems early, for instance, in this case, like if I remove this S at the end, you know, parts picture. Well, w why is this giving me a notification, right? Um, it's pretty small on the screen, but actually it says like parse picture is undefined, uh, but it's never used. Um, so here you can actually see if it's being used or not. This is extremely helpful during development <coughs> because otherwise, again, you have that one extra cycle where you go to the browser, you check it out, and you, you see in your console that there's something wrong. Here you can just spot it early on. Um, all right. So let's make sure my file is good again. Um, so the most important thing for me with linting is making sure that it's actually live. There's a lot of editors that you use TextMate, Sublime, WebStorm, uh, even VI, like they have all plugins built in themselves uh, to do this on the fly. So as soon as you're typing, as you saw on my screen, it's actually doing this. Um, the other thing is make sure it actually happens on both as well. So if other people are checking in their code, um, make sure you actually, make sure the build actually fails. If you use something like Travis CI, then it's actually going to give you a red warning before you're actually going to merge the pull request. Um, again, a couple of tools for JavaScript, JS Lint, JS Hint. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. JS Hint has become more and more popular. Um, JS Style Checker um, is pretty recent. Uh, we love it on our project so far. Um, again, I don't have to say to anybody on Git, make sure you know, their space is aligned. They already know before. Uh, so it's, you know, I don't have to spend that much time. And there's also like tools for CSS and HTML as well. Um, next up is like optimizing your um, build. Um, so what I mean with that is there's a couple of tools out there. Actually, we had a great presentation early on about like somebody that actually built their own tool. Um, but there's also a lot of tools out there that actually already do a lot of these things for you. Um, there's a couple of big ones. Um, so for instance, like Grunt and Gulp. Um, there's also Broccoli and you can even like use Make. Again, it's not about like which tool you use. It's more about which tool actually works for your team. Um, they do things in a slightly different way. Um, so Grunt, for instance, has been along for a pretty long time. Um, and they have a lot, a lot of plugins. Um, and uh, you know, it's more like the, the fodder, like it's pretty mature and, you know, it, it works pretty well. Um, but there's some pros and cons to it. Um, for instance, with Gulp, there's like one specific um, item that you do per task. So uh, that actually helps you out a lot. And also just the syntax feels very similar to when you're writing any like Node.js app. Um, so what I mean with that, for instance, right? Like this is just my grunt file right here. Um, let me just bring up these two things next to each other. Um, so my grunt file just looks like this, and it's very like configuration um, heavy. Um, you, it's not really like it doesn't really feel like code. Um, so what it does when you actually run your grunt command right now, it's going to do a couple of things, right? It's going to concatenate my JavaScript. It's going to uh, use uglify in this particular case. You can also use com uh, closure, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's going to lint my files. And last but not least, like this is actually pretty important as well, while you're building something to have some kind of watch. Um, so what this watch is going to be doing, as soon as you change anything in your code, it's automatically going to run the build uh, on your command line. Um, so yeah, let, let's actually try that out, right? Um, so what I'm going to do here in this particular case is just grunt watch, right? It's just watching. So it's watching for any file changes on my uh, system. And then when I'm changing something, like when I actually break the code, right, and I just saved the file, that's the only thing I did. And I didn't like go back to the terminal, it's completely breaking. And this is what I want. I want to, again, like spot these problems like extremely early on. And again, like saving and everything's fine again. Um, so I'm also going to show off how um, Gulp is doing this. It's a little bit of different syntax. Like if you used to Node again, like this feels very, very similar. Um, 
The one other really big advantage is that they're using pipes. Um, so in Node, there's a way to actually channel these files through. So you only have to do one map manipulation uh, on like a specific uh, file, and then you just transfer that to another without actually having to do any I.O. functionality. It actually makes your build way faster. Um, and that's what we've seen with a lot of people that moved from Grunt to Gulp. Um, again, like a little bit of distance syntax when you run it, um, this is doing exactly the same thing. Uh, just a little bit of uh, different output as well in the browser. I don't know if people like uh, pink or purple. Um, and it's also doing my watch task actually right here. Um, all right. So um, make sure that whatever build tool you use, like these are just two examples, make sure it actually does like compilation, concatenation, minifying, hashing. So what is hashing actually going to be doing is making sure that you don't use um, like just a regular file name, right, like main.js. If you're going to be using that on your file, like actually like serving that up, uh, what's going to be happening is that, um, you know, your cache, right, you're, there's going to be cache conflicts and you need to expire your cache. With hashing, it's just going to make sure that um, you use like an MD5 hash and show that file instead so it always changes when there's any file changes on your, uh, in your file as well. Uh, again, like watch for changes and lint your code. Um, Last but not least, um, like this is something not really like front-end related, uh, but it's a tool that is really cool if anybody's like using Git or GitHub. I hope almost everybody's using that. Um, it's where all my code lives as well. And the name of this particular tool is actually called Hub. Um, and what Hub is going to be doing, it enables you to do like way less typing. Usually what you have to do is, you know, you do like Git, clone and then you're like, oh no, now I have to go to like GitHub and try to copy this URL and then I have to paste it into my terminal again. It's not something you do every single day, but if you have a lot of members on your team, this helps you out a lot. So instead of just having to write all this, it's very similar to like Git remote. You don't even have to put your repo name in there. It actually figures that out by itself. So that's pretty cool. Um, and one thing that I love myself as well is like making pull requests from the command line. Um, what this is allow you to do, like, usually what you do is like, you push something to the server, uh, you go to GitHub, you refresh the page a couple of times to see if you know that one little bar there, right? And then you say, make pull requests, you check your different changes, whether they actually would line up, and you hit make a pull request. With this tool, what we actually can do is make your pull request from the command line, uh, which is extremely powerful. Um, even creating repositories is just git create. It's going to use the name of the current directory and use your uh, own uh, owner name. And this one I like myself as well. Like in any git repository, like this whole presentation is actually on git as well. What you can do is just git browse. Um, and then what it's going to be doing is opening this particular thing in GitHub. Um, all right. Um, and then I just want to round up a little bit. It's like, make sure to actually build your own tools. Um, if you want to make yourself pretty popular with like some of the other developers on your team, um, that's a really good thing to do because you're just spending way less and less time on actually just um, doing these main, you know, maintenance tasks and just write your own scripts. Um, recently, I wrote something for updating our Angular gem, like we have our own Angular gem, and just one script and it automatically does everything for us. Um, something else I built is just for fun as well. Um, it's a little tool uh, called Jira Clippy. Uh, there's not that many users, but it's very useful for our team because otherwise we had to like copy the URL, copy the description, copy the title. Now with just one single click on a, an icon in your browser, it's copied just by default. Um, and this is something, the last thing I want to show you is something we're seeing more and more like uh, in like different companies. Um, and right now there's not really that many tools out there that do that for you, especially not if you use like specific build tools. Um, but this is um, like what it's doing here is like showing the build information. It's showing how long it's actually taking for us to like warm up our cache and also our open pull requests. Um, before we had like, you know, 10 to 11 open pull requests every single day and I was like, come on people, like try to merge these things in. What I did instead is I showed this on the screen in our office and people were like, uh, we need to do something about it. So, uh, like the boss coming in like, hey, you know, we want that feature in, like make sure to actually do that. Um, so yeah, um, 
And if you have any other questions, then like definitely reach out to me. Uh, this is my Twitter handle. Uh, thank you so much.